Super Smash Bros. for Wii U has finally been out worldwide for a while. As I've mentioned, I wanted to hold off reviewing the game until I've had enough time to mess with the online features, which debuted right at the game's launch. Now that I've had time to play with everything Smash Bros. Wii U has to offer, I figured I would at least try and wrap all my thoughts into a review. For starters, I've already reviewed Smash Bros. 3DS pretty extensively, which you can check out right here. Smash Bros. for Wii U has all the same mechanics, the items, the same characters, and many of the same modes as the 3DS version. Also, I've already covered almost an hour of preview footage with more detailed thoughts on many of the game modes, which you can check out in this playlist right here. Since we're going to be focusing on the differences between the 3DS version and the Wii U one, let's get things rolling with the first big difference you'll notice right away. The visuals. This is a very pretty game. Characters are more detailed and expressive than ever before, and the stage environments are downright gorgeous. While past Smash games are fairly static, you can stop and notice some seriously slick animations in the backdrops this time around. And of course, as is the Nintendo Wii U standard right now, everything runs in a smooth 1080p, 60 frames per second. One of my biggest complaints with the 3DS was that it felt a little uncomfortable for a fast-paced fighting game, and the Wii U answers that by adding so many methods of control that you're bound to find at least one that you like. The GameCube controller adapter gives you the Smash Bros. control you've come to know and love over a decade, but you can even go with the Wiimote Nunchug, the gamepad itself, the Pro Controller, and so many more options. There are also a lot of new modes, many of them tailored around a single-player experience. Yes, there's still no dedicated adventure like the Subspace Emissary, but there are enough modes to keep you involved for a long time. Classic mode is relatively unchanged, but the new Master Fortress boss at 8.0 difficulty and higher is a brutal twist for the most daring players. It made me want to rip out my hair at times, but I loved it. There are also more individual challenge stages than ever before, letting you battle in a variety of ways that you might not normally, including stamina battles with Ridley, or a coin battle to see who can pay off Tom Nook's loan first. Then there's the randomly generated master and crazy orders, which are essentially limitless. Every single time you do one of these modes, you're going to have new options and new modifiers to change your battle conditions and opponents. Even after you've exhausted everything else, trying to break your crazy orders record is a challenge that you can always come back to, which I really enjoyed. And of course, you now have the ability to fight with up to eight players at a time in the game's classic multiplayer mode. You're limited to larger stages depending on how many people you're playing with, although sometimes these stages still feel too small or they're way too big. The Great Cave Offensive is just too big. Even on a 60-inch television screen, I found it hard to see everything my characters were doing, and it was even harder trying to determine what items were on the ground. But overall, getting a full group together for free-for-alls and team battles is great. The concept of gathering people around to play video games locally is a dying art with the rise of online play, but Smash Bros. proves that it is still the king of live multiplayer action. There are a few features that I'm not as crazy about, though. Smash Tour is ambitious as a Wii U exclusive board game for up to four friends, but it's just so crazy. Too crazy! One of the best parts of Smash Bros. is its relative pickup and playability, but this game has so many rules, side items, stat boosts, board mechanics, and everyone takes their turn at the same time. Don't get me wrong, there is fun to be had with Smash Tour if you put the time into it, but it's not fun having to reteach all the rules every time you want to play it with a new friend. Then there's the Stage Builder. This feature has so much potential, but I feel like a lot of that was wasted on what's a pretty bare-bones custom stage tool. You can draw land masses with the gamepad and stylus, which is perfect for creating your own stage, but the selection of terrain and special stage modifiers is really slim. If Nintendo were to release even a few more packs of stage creation items, I feel like it would really give the community the potential to create some incredible stages. It's really easy to draw them into existence, but I just wish that there was more I could do. Speaking of drawing with the gamepad, you can also use it to create custom pictures with the trophies that you've unlocked. Once again, while the gamepad functionality is great, you're limited by options, such as just one of four different backgrounds. The trophies themselves are awesome though, and there's more here than ever before. While Nintendo can't cram every series as playable fighters or assist trophies, it's always fun to pick out obscure franchises in the trophy section. Smash Bros. Wii U also introduces the Amiibo, Nintendo-themed figurines that communicate with the system to create custom figures that play in-game and grow more powerful over time. I will admit, the Amiibo's maximum difficulty is brutal, executing frame-perfect shields and dodges that most humans just simply could not do. However, one thing I've learned is that fully leveled-up Amiibo also get built-in boosts to their attack power. I wish I could simply train up an AI that's really smart for practice games, rather than have to face an opponent with an unfair advantage. I could go on and on about the features. There are just so many things going on in this game's many menus. So much to unlock, secret challenges, trophies, custom parts, music... Oh man, the music! There's just so much of it, from so many games, and so many composers, and so many remixes. There are apparently 437 musical tracks in all, and I still have a ways to go before I get the full collection. 
It's by far one of the greatest, if not the greatest, video game soundtrack of all time. And finally, the big reason I was waiting on this review, online play. It wasn't ready before launch with review copies, but it's been available for a while now. For some, you might not have many people to play with locally, and you want to test your skills against others online. Honestly, if you've seen my 3DS review, my opinion with online play remains exactly the same. When it works, which is most of the time, it's a decent way to get a variety of opponents. However, because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, if you or your opponent have a weak internet connection, you might lag. At times, the lag can be unbearable. I'm almost positive it's not on my end. I have a great internet connection, and have even gone as far as using the Ethernet cable extension. I'm not 100% sure why the lag is still there, but it is definitely a bummer. Another thing I still wish I could do is play with a ranking system in For Glory. Because there's no matchmaking, you might play against players that are way better than you, or way worse. I'm a pretty big Smash Bros. enthusiast, and most of the time I hop on, players are way below my personal skill level. I don't get much satisfaction out of beating players with less experience. I'd rather lose to a bunch of players at my skill level or above so I could continually improve. The only major change for online play on the Wii U is that you can go online alongside a friend and play some 202 matches against the world. It's definitely fun, but I still hate that team matches are time-based and not stock-based. On a personal note, I've found it very hard to return to the 3DS version once I've started playing on the Wii U. The added modes, visuals, and control options have made it so that the Wii U is by far the definitive Smash Bros. experience for this generation. I still think that the 3DS's exclusive Smash Run mode is awesome and more fun than Smash Tour, but outside of that, it's going to be hard to go back to the 3DS version unless I'm traveling away from home. In so many ways, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U stands as almost a perfect metaphor for what you'd expect out of a Nintendo game. Smooth and colorful visuals, a focus on playing with the people around you, a little lackluster online features, incredible depth, and of course, fun. Even though I didn't fall in love with every mode that this game has to offer, there's still so much to dig through here that you're bound to find something you like. Smash Bros. for 3DS was a game that I sunk hundreds of hours into, and with Smash Bros. for Wii U, I wouldn't be surprised if that number went into the thousands. Thanks for watching today's review. You can click subscribe to stay up to date on my most recent videos, or you can check out some of my other recent reviews by clicking the videos above. I'll catch you guys next time with more Nintendo content.